Welcome to Encounter Wargaming, I'm Jay, and we're here at the second annual Hogtowner for the greatest tournament that Hogtown 40k hosts. So we're going to take a journey inside, check out all the tables and the armies, and just have two days of awesome fun. So let's do it. Alright, so if you're a regular watcher of the channel, you know that Adam and I are members of Hogtown 40k, which is the 40k gaming club here in Toronto, well 40k and 30k, and uh, this is the second time we've done the Hogtowner, so it is legitimately an annual event, uh, but this year we're doing 40k and Horus Heresy, so that's pretty awesome, uh, basically two tournaments running side by side. And uh, yeah, it's just an awesome event, we had so much fun last year, and this year is probably going to be equally as awesome, if not better. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Let's go inside, check out the armies, and see what the tournament's saying. Living well, I've thrown around the street, living poverty. 
spell Well, everything's a box inside a box Inside a box, inside a box Inside a box, inside a box Inside a box, inside a box People are going to be upset, people might cry, but it's great for, for narrative heresy gamers. For us 40k players, we've got a great event for you today and tomorrow. Um, you've got your player packs. In your player packs is everything you need for this weekend. You've got your missions, you've got your deployment maps. Achievements are something new this year. Uh, take a look at the list. At the end of each game, just go through it with your opponent and check off anything that you've got in terms of the achievement. There is a prize for the person who gets the most achievement points. And I'll tell you right now, they're not all something you want to happen. <laughs> there are some very bad things that are on that achievement list. Um, but hopefully some of you guys will, uh, will score pretty high on that. So, like I said, everyone here is registered. Uh, in your player packs, you will also find five raffle tickets and voting slips. Uh, there is a best sport for day one and day two. At the end of the day today, please put uh, voting slips in there. There's also best table, best presentation. Uh, don't, 40K players, don't vote for best presentation. 30K players, 30K players, same thing. You're separate. Uh, but for tables, feel free to go so over across both and vote for whatever's going on. Whatever table you like, vote for the best table. And then in front of us here, we have today's raffle. There's a couple other boxes of raffle prizes for tomorrow. We'll be selling raffle tickets at the back. Um, what did we say? Five for 10, and five for, what was the price for raffle tickets? We'll sort that out. We'll sort out the raffle tickets in a second. Well, we're also selling Hogtown dice, um, which will be the exact same price as raffle tickets, which will make it very easy. So yeah, I'm gonna post rounds in a second. And if you have any questions, um, you can find me, you can find Paul, you can find Connor, you can find Mike, you can find James, Graham, mainly for heresy. I wouldn't ask Graham any 40k questions. <laughs> that's, that's a bad idea. But uh, I'm going to post the rounds in a second. Have fun. Nick, you had a question? What time's the bar open? 11 o'clock. <laughs> and everybody, I, I don't know where Beta is. Beta is the magnificent woman who will be serving us today. She loves us already. Make sure you show her some love and have a great day, guys. If anyone... All right, game one against Adam, Adam Walker. <laughs> He's got a badass Tyranid army here, and we're facing a lot of Gene Steelers. They're not on the table yet because obviously he's still setting up, so I thought I'd just do this now. But basically, we've got an objective here. I'm setting my Marines on. We got one in the center and one over in his deployment, which I believe is in this building here. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're fighting over today. Pretty fitting that uh, I'm playing on my own table in the first game, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, so I'll be back with you every turn to tell you how it's going. Alright, we're at the top of two, so basically at the end of this turn he ran all his gene stealers up here. They took out two units of space marines, and then the contemptors just turned around and dag at the crap out of them until they were dead. Which is awesome. Contemptors are wicked cool with virtual candies and soul burners. Uh, yeah, so I charged up here, took out a unit of guards with my mauler and my uh, disco lord. And now I got gene stealers running from over here through the tunnel, coming straight at my sorcerer, which is never good. At. So Adam scored one point at the beginning of his turn. Uh, I believe he also has one secondary for killing a unit in the first turn completely. And uh, yeah, I got some. Uh, what are those other points called? What? The feats or whatever? What are they called? Achievements. Because I failed to charge, re rolled it, and failed it again. <laughs> so I got an achievement. Not a good one. Oh, yeah, true. So, come back at the, uh, at the end of turn two, beginning of turn three. 
this shot from the dudes in the building at my Lord Discord, and, and look at these amazing two of arms. I'm sorry, four up with negative two. Ooh. So that's the end of turn two. Man, this has been a crazy battle. Uh, so this turn, basically, these guys took some shots down the field with very little success against the uh, little hive tyrant there. These guys charged into the gene stealers, taking up quite a few of them, but not enough to matter. And uh, this guy is all on his own, fighting some gaunts, and uh, he took quite a few of them out, believe it or not. And uh, yeah, so the uh, swarm lord over here just ate that molecule for breakfast, uh, and that's basically it. So, at the uh, in my turn, I got a point for that. Now we're going to turn three. Adam's got a point for that objective still. Still, nobody holds the center. But uh, it is what it is. Come back to you after turn three. So here we are at the end of turn three. We're going to call the game here because I think we only have like ten minutes left or something. So, yeah. Basically, he killed all my space marines here, giving him that objective. Which if he went on to turn four, he would score a point there. He would score two points here because Gene Steelers are troop choices. And uh, another point there. So that puts him ahead by four. Ah, so that would be six points this turn. Yep. So putting you ahead by six, and then that gets him another secondary. So I'm looking at two objective points, two secondaries. He's looking at eight objective points and five secondaries. Because you got more power level on the table, you got guys in all four quarters, you got all the objectives. Power level is a thing. Yeah, it is. Is it? It's like the more power level left on the table is one of them. Uh, less units in your deployment zone. Oh, maybe I was reading the next scenario. Oh well, okay, that's fine. So either way, he's ahead uh, five secondaries and seven objective points, eight objective points. So yeah, crap. And all I got left is my chappy and one contemporary. So that was a raping. Good first round. I'm gonna have lunch and go on to round two. So good game, Adam. Yeah, good game. That's awesome. Thank you. Game two up against these beautiful blue admec. Look at this gun line right here. Oh my god. Crazy. Uh, so this game we are fighting over five objectives. We've got one, two is in there, three in the center, four over here, and five right there. Basically, uh, it's, we're going to roll every turn to see which one's worth more points. Otherwise, they're all just worth one. And uh, little twist to the game, they gave us negative one toughness if you're holding the objective, or within three of the objective, which would be holding it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I mean, other than that, we're just, you know, normal secondaries. And uh, we're about to get the first turn started. So you finished deploying first. Would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go first. You would like to go first. Okay, that means I can seize if I'd like to. Let's give it a shot. Nope. Is a five. All right, get back to you after turn one. End of the first turn, like a tenth of charge over here, took out armor here all on his own. And then these guys over here, I couldn't quite kill the robots with these guys. Yeah, I killed three of the five. And then over here, I just ate that unit of Electro Priest with the two Maulers and the Lord Disco. So, the end of the turn, we're looking at three points each because he's got one, two, three objectives. The one that was worth two points is over here, so that gives me two. Plus one is three. So there we go, tie game right off the bat. And we're going into the second turn. All right, bottom of turn two. Number one was the important one this turn, and he had a unit on there. I wasn't able to take it, but I was able to take him off it. So that at least means that I have one, two, and he has one, two. So we remain tied. <laughs> going into turn three. Oh, I should tell you, I just like literally, these guys finally finished off those robots, came over here, both a Contemptor and the Lord Discordant took out the last uh, Armager, and then he exploded, killing his own Tech Priest, killing my Contemptor. Uh, what else did he kill? My Sorcerer, who was up here fighting those dudes. And the last uh, troop. And the last troop on the objective, so, wow. That was crazy. Uh, going on to turn three. Alright, so that's the end of turn three. Are we calling it here or are we doing another one? Okay, we'll do another quick one. So basically, I was able to jump on this objective. We didn't even roll this. Oh yeah, we did. That's, we did, the, yeah. that's the important one. Okay, cool. And I took him off this one, which is great. Because that means now I have one. That one's not accounted for. Um, two there. And one there. So that's 
four for me this turn. Current score is still nine to six. Right, five plus four, yep. Okay, so I'm ahead by three points, finally pulling ahead. Uh, we'll do a quick fourth turn, and that'll be it, so let's do it. So, final turn, we're calling it after four, because we've got about ten minutes left. My Mullers were able to keep this objective through my turn, which was great. Uh, he didn't manage to kill my uh, buddy, my Warlord, up here. But I did manage to kill his Warlord, was holding that one, denying him a point. Giving me twelve by the end of the game. So that was the important one, so I got two, three, added on to my nine from last turn. What was your final score? Six. Six objective points, okay. And then we've added up secondaries, I've got four and you've got two? Cool. So there you go, that's the name of the game. Let's go on to the next one. Alright, game three, day one, playing against Nick G. Uh, with his awesome conversions, which is wicked because he's got his converted Lord Discordant against my converted Lord Discordant. Yeah, more Discordant on more Discordant. So basically, the objectives we've got four, they're all 15 inches from the center in a diagonal one, two, three, four. Uh, basically, we get one victory point per turn if we take an objective, we get three if we take four objectives, all four objectives, and then of course, secondaries. The usuals. So basically, I have to decide whether I want first or second turn, and I think I'm taking second. So we'll get Nick started on his first turn, I'll come back to you after turn one. And to turn one, so uh, basically, he moved all his cultists up before the game even started and uh, took both these objectives right off the bat, or just this one, sorry, and hung the line along, forcing me to assault all of his cultists, slowing down my movement, basically preventing me from running up the table, which is a good strategy. Drake flew around this way, came up here, assaulted these assholes and killed two of them, so they just backed off and everybody else just unloaded on Mr. Heldrake and uh, yeah, he fell from the sky pretty easily. But right now we're looking at scoring points, right? Every turn? At the end of the battle round. So I have one and two, and you have one, so I get one. Yep. So you I was wrong, it's not points for having objectives, it's points for having more than your opponent. Three points for having all four on the table. So yes, that means Nick has two this turn and I have one, which puts him in the lead. Going on to turn two. Alright, end of turn two, I respawn my space screens over here, hopefully to move up on this. Mahler Fiend moved up, took out the last of the cultists. I tried to charge with these contemptors. I don't know, he let me move up on this temple here. I tried to charge but didn't make it, but that's okay because this contemptor alone interrupted and beat the crap out of that defiler. But of course, uh, Discord just so many attacks. Took down most of this guy's wounds and killed the uh, Mollerfane. This guy charged into the night, didn't do crap all. He literally whiffed every single roll, which is just. Sorcerer charged in here. Tried to do the diabolic strength thing, but what did he take? Maybe one wound off the uh, Discordant. Man, Lord Discordant's are gross. Uh, once again, Nick scores another point. He's got one objective, and I've got none. Even when I took him off this one, it made absolutely no difference. We're going into the third turn, and let's see if I can even score a point. Oh, what an eventful third turn. Basically, uh, Mollerfiend backed off the knight, and the Contemptors just came down the hill. Dak of the crap out of the night, getting me the secondary for uh, killing the most expensive unit on the table. The Contemptors just jumped into the Discordant, took some revenge for killing their uh, other Contemptor and Mollerfiend buddies. And yeah, I mean, that's really all I could do. So I got another secondary by being all outside my deployment zone. Every unit I had is outside my deployment zone at this point. But he has uh, boots on the ground because he has more troops than me. He gets another point for the objective. He uh, got first strike. Um, yeah, I don't remember what the other one is, but basically, for pro winning the primary, he gets 10 points. He got three secondaries, he gives him 13. I get two points for losing the pro uh, primary, and I got three secondaries, giving me five. So there you go. That's the end of day one, game three. Ooh, tiring. Can't wait for tomorrow. We have a winner of 50 Hogtown Dice. God damn it. Lucas. Hey! <laughs> Digital project box. 
I guess you can put your paints in here. They won't spell. Oh, it doesn't mean that. So no. What is the number? Uh, 826 Yeah. Oh, we're definitely double checking. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
next up is a fabulous joint screen for those of us who like uh, our uh, tights, tight and leopard prints. MF. MF. Bye. 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 has like the goblin green face. <laughs> it's so classic. Uh, so this is for the jeans killer called Santis, which actually has an option of a dagger or a I like a plastic bag tangled. The same as day one, but with different people. <laughs> We've got new prizes. Lunch will be the same. Uh, and have a great time, guys. All right, round four, game one of day two. I'm playing against Dave. I'm and Dave with the Eldar! <laughs> That's right, with a very Wraith heavy Eldar list. So you can see his transports here. He's got some Wraith up in there. Apparently, he's deep striking in some more. We got these bastards infiltrated up over here. And uh, a couple up here, too. So, uh, yeah, snipers are scary. The name, because the name of this game is characters. Basically, Nothing can score except for characters, and there is only one objective on the field. So, only the characters can get there, but even then, we have intel points. Three intel points spread across our characters, so only the characters with intel points can get points. Uh, yeah. So, got my demon engine list here, ready to run up on that objective and kick some wraith butt. That flyer is going to be a pain in the butt for me. But, uh, We'll see how it goes. So I'll come back to you guys after the first turn. All right, bottom of turn one, start of turn two. He basically jumped his raised jet over here uh, to try and flame me from behind, killing a unit of space marines in the process. Uh, but nothing else really did much. He kind of moved past a couple of psychic powers, blah, 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 blah. I moved all my stuff up, slowly working my way around. And uh, basically, all my, all my plasma shot him. All the Contemptors turned around, shot him, took him right out of the sky. Negative ones mean nothing when you hit on twos to start with. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so that's first turn. So second turn, we'll start to score points if we can get a character on the objective. I don't think he has any characters in his Wraith units, but I don't know that for a fact. Uh, I assume he doesn't. And uh, yeah, third turn we're going to start counting for the intel points. Sorry, so I was wrong at the beginning. The intel points is actually on the third turn and further on. Uh, we count how many intel points are still alive. On the second turn and on, we score the objective if we have characters on it. So that's the name of the game, just for the correction in there. Going into turn two, I'll come back to you after uh, after this turn. So end of round two, he had a Farseer on the center objective pretty much in his second turn. He just jumped right up on there, dumped out a bunch of the Wraith Blades, which ran under the tunnel to try and fight my Maulers. And my Maulers killed a couple of them, but uh, it was actually... No, I think they killed them all actually in his turn, not even in mine, which is awesome. The Wraith Lord over here that charged me, he got su supported by the Chappie and the other Mauler. They just ripped him to pieces. My Space Marines came over here trying to shoot at them. Didn't quite take him out, but I took out a couple models. This Contemptor charged at the Farseer and took him off the objective. Just punched him, squished his head, literally. And uh, so that means neither of us are scoring points this turn. 
Uh, now we're beginning the third battle round, so at the end of this round we count up how many characters with intel points we have and score points based on that. So at this point, in order to get the objective, one of us has to get a character over there. He's got one left on the battlefield, the Farseer, he just moved there. And I've still got all of mine, so this is looking in my favor, but we'll see what happens at the end of the third battle round. I'll come back to you then. Alright, end of the third. What a bloody round. Holy crap. So, all the Wraith Guard over here, they were all fighting with these guys, and basically the Contemptors just turned into mush. Uh, this guy over here ended up punching a tank dead, which exploded, killing his Farseer, which was trying to get the objective. A couple of these guys took some wounds off these guys, uh, which basically just allowed my character to just jump on this. But I don't get a point until the beginning of my next turn, so if he kills him, I'm not getting that objective point. But I do have one, two intel points on the table, which we add up at the end of this round, which gives me two points. He has one with his Farseer with Bike, uh, so that gives him one point. So none of us have got any objectives yet, but we're finally getting intel points, so that's something. And, uh, yeah. That's it. Oh, the Wraith Guard over here fought these guys and uh, killed one model, but didn't cause any damage to me, which is great. I killed one model. And that's that. Back to you, turn four. All right, end of turn four. Worked out for me. Uh, basically, yeah, I just kind of stayed here. So, oh, I, because of the twist, we were able to heal characters every turn. So I just healed him up a couple wounds, which didn't matter anyway. Because Contemptors here all fired at the Union of Guardians, wiping them all out. This guy here fired at, uh, oh, he finished them off, actually. And then he fired at him, taking him down to one wound. So I couldn't quite kill him, but that's okay. Because at the end of this turn, I get, well, at the beginning of my turn, I should say, I get one point for that. And then at the end of this turn, I get two points for having two Intel characters left. And you get one point for having an Intel character left. Leaving the final score at five to two. Cool. Good game, Dave. Good game, man. That was fun. All right, round two, game two, game five of the tournament. Uh, I'm facing off against a really badass looking Death Guard army. Awesome. Those plague uh, crawlers are gonna be the bane of my existence. I know it because I'm nice and hidden. That doesn't mean crap to the borders there. So, long story short, mission, we're doing the, whatever it's called, the arrowhead deployment. Uh, we've got five objectives. One, two, uh, three. Sorry, four objectives and one in his deployment. And basically, anyone with the fly keyword gets obsec over top of anyone else, otherwise it's the most models we have in uh, three inches. On top of that, the twist for this game is we have to, as you can see here, he's rolling for every unit. We have to see if they get slowed down or not, which is kind of weird, but cool nonetheless. Uh, and uh, infantry yeah. four up, so they're half. Cool. Advance. Okay. So slow death guard, they're not so slow. So, yep, I'll come back to you guys after the first turn and we'll see where we're at. Okay, end of turn one. Charged this guy in over here. Tried to charge him and failed, but I was hoping to take that guy off the objective. Didn't quite do it. Over here, he had this guy on the objective still. Both the Discordant and the Wounded Mauler Fiend tried to fight him. Can you move full? And he was left with one wound. So that means that going into turn two, he is now scoring three points at the beginning of his turn for having this objective, that, and that objective. And I have to wait till the start of my turn to score. But most likely... Where's my other one? Here it is. That guy right there is probably the only one I'm going to have unless I can kill... No, in my turn, that's all I'm going to get. Okay, so come back to you after turn two. End of turn two, start of turn three. I ran my Mauler up over here, trying to kill the blow light lab. Two blow drones and a demon. Killed one, because he only had one wound left, but the uh, other two just took a couple wounds off Mauler, but that's okay. And, uh, yeah, Sorcerer flew up here to do some powers. Looks like he's about to get flamed by a blow drone in the third turn. <laughs> Basically, at the end of his turn, he actually didn't have his Lord here, so he wasn't able to score that point, sadly. It's just forgetfulness. But he got these two, because there's one here and one over there. And even though I have models there, he has fly, models with the fly keyword, which gives them priority. They get offset over other units. So that puts them up at five, and I'm only at one. So I better hold on to some objectives in through my turn. Oh man, this is an uphill game. Holy crap. 
So we're at the end of turn three, start of turn four, and basically, how do I wrap this up? This guy flew up here, playing the crap out of my sorcerer, he's long gone. Actually, no, it was the mortar that killed my sorcerer. He had one wound left, and then he just took him out. Ah, uh, these guys just all came around here. The Tempter tried to take the objective and failed miserably. Um, however, I did kill some Plague Marines and crap over here. Other than that, Chappie's all over there by himself now, which kind of sucks. He's going to get eaten by the Demon Prince and that, uh, whatever he's called, the Flamer character from the Death Guard. So, that gets him three points this turn. Uh, putting you at eight points now. And I have three. There is no way to catch up, I think, at this point. So we're going to do our fourth turn. I'll come back to you after that. End of turn four. It's not looking good for the uh, Red Corsair on Warriors. <laughs> Demon Dark Mechanicus that I'm feeling here. Basically, I still got this point like every turn, but he's getting like three points a turn at this point. So there's really no way I can win this battle. But basically, the Contemptors moved up, tried to help out over here. Uh, took out the blow drone, but that's basically it. All those other characters, these two have fly now, so they're just gonna storm this guy, take him out, and take that objective. Which, yeah. So just now at the beginning of your turn, you got another three points, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think this game is pretty much in the bag. Cause already we're looking at 11 for him and three for me. I got no way to really uh, contest these objectives, so we're just gonna play out one more turn and see how it goes. Third, oh God. So all that's left at the end of the game is my units of space wings here. I tried my last turn just to take some pot shots at this guy to see if I could do it. And he is now left with one wound, so I couldn't even take him off of that objective if I wanted to. Basically, I mean, if we'd gone another turn, he would have gone way ahead of me. So right now we're already at 11 to 4. If we'd gone one more turn, I probably would have been 14 to 5. So <laughs> either way, massive victory. And uh, yeah, Death Guard are gross in every sense of the word. It's true. It's a good game, man. Great game, man. Had a lot of fun. Yeah, me too. On to the next one. Final round of the Hogtowner. I'm playing against John and his Space Wolves. Lots of Primaris, some Wolfen. Got some psychic powers up in there. Some fly in spacemen. See how they do. The mission today is one center objective. Within six inches of this objective, you do not get invulnerable saves. However, the objective is actually an 18 inch diameter first turn, or 18 inch radius. So we have a 36 inch circle here. And as long as we have more models within it, we score the objective. Next turn it decreases three inches. The next turn after that it decreases another three inches. And gets slowly, slowly smaller and smaller. So the point is just to have more models in the center. But if you're right in the center, you're easier to kill, more or less. So yeah. Um, now, you finish deploying first, so you get choice of first or second turn. Okay, so good luck. Let's do this, I'll come back to you guys after the first turn. End of the first turn, everybody moved up basically. He tried to stay out of that six inch bubble just so he would still get his invulnerable saves. And oh my god, Wolfen are gross. I charged them with three Mauler Fiends. I killed a bunch of them, but they get to strike me back. And he interrupted after my first one went, so that means he got to strike this guy. They basically got to strike twice with Thunder Hammers, which flat three damage, even if he only gets one hit in. Like, you know, just gross. Um, so. As far as the 18-inch bubble is concerned, I he shot the crap out of my space marine, so I only have three models in the range. He's got ten right there. I killed one of his trooper units completely, but he also killed one of mine completely, and half of another one. So that makes one point for John, and none for me. Let's see how the next turn goes. Uh, end of turn two. Oh my god, Wolfen are gross. So basically, pretty much all my stuff's dead. He's scoring another point at the beginning of the third turn now. We're going, it's only the second turn. We're going into the third. Holy crap. So all I got left is these guys here and like three space marines hanging out of the building here. Other than that, we're pretty much done. At this point, I don't think I can ever catch up because he's got, he started with way more models than I had. He's got two troop choices there alone. So unless I wipe out all of those, I, even, I still can't even do it. Yeah, maybe if I wiped out all those ten and move these three into the range, I can get three in there instead. But good luck with just this. So whatever. I'll play out a couple more turns. I might get tabled, but I don't care because I had fun today. 
end of the third, that means end of the game, because he just totally tabled me. Basically, yeah. I mean, he was already ahead in points anyway, but points aside, basically he just finished me off with his bolters over here, took out the uh, abeyance. Yeah. And uh, what the hell else happened? Oh, the long face killed the contemptor, right? Or finished off the dudes, and then, yeah, these guys just jumped in. He only had one wound left, punched him to death. Craziness. Oh, first time I got tabled today, but that's okay, because that was actually a wicked fun game. The dice just didn't agree with me. So, good game, John. Good game, man. Yep. So that's the end of the tournament. Uh, we're going to take a little pause, and then uh, I'll show you guys all the prize draws and all that kind of stuff. We'll do all the wrap-up. And, uh, yeah, another year. Dunzo. Danny M. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that is a lucky 
food was absolutely fantastic. Woo! And there is Woo! one person, I hope she's back there. Yes. If she's not, please give it up for Beta! Story time again, but for those of you who are interested, the Loyalists won the 30k campaign. Rigged. So, uh, yeah, you guys worked really hard on that. It looked really cool going on. Yeah. Uh, Play more 30k. So, a couple other shows who, uh, who aren't here and weren't able to make it today, but still really contributed to today's event. Um, I want to tell you about Jim Biden. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. This guy is a fucking hero. He had a last minute family thing and wasn't able to come, and he messaged me and said, I'm sorry I have to drop out, but I'm still going to make sure I get the train to you so you can use my train at the end. Yeah. So he actually went out of his way to uh, provide tables for you guys to play on, um, and so did Phil uh, Savar. Um, he wasn't able to make it today. Going one by one. So Phil helped out as well, and then Matt Schnarr, um unfortunately had to go to uh, a wedding. Uh, unfortunately. That was really as fun. Come on, let's yeah. be serious. Uh, they donated tables. Um, so yeah, thanks to those guys. <laughs> Sponsor. So our big sponsor, of course, was Sword and Board. They provided a lot of the prizes up here today. Um, we got to use their terrain. Um, some of the tables we played on were Sword and Board tables. We stripped them out dry, and they're like, we have an excellent tournament on Sunday. I'm like, well, how many well, buildings do you use the next one? Uh, it was fine. It was fine. Uh, Big Dong's Blur, by the way. Mention that. Oh, yes. Uh, next weekend at Sword and Board is Big Dong Blur. There will be a beer garden with outdoor tables where you can come and play Warhammer outside. Sweet. Come on, beer. Come on. Beer. Drink a beer. Woo! Instead of a basement, instead of a basement <laughs> or in, a, in a hall, hopefully it doesn't rain. Um, another another sponsor today is KR. So KR obviously supplied these two cases as well as some of the draw prizes. Um, the Warpainter.com. Woo! Should be back up and running soon. Yeah, uh, and some great prizes that you guys won, uh, and they also he also supplied, uh, supplied the Harrison prizes. Yep. Uh, in kind of wargaming, obviously that you saw those dice. They also threw some prizes in, so thank you to you guys. And they also did five tables, which is huge. <laughs> Uh, 
so the way we're going to do these prizes up here, uh, same as last year, uh, basically the, the top prize down, we'll get the first pick off of the table. Uh, so we have Blackstone Fortress, we have Shadow Spear, we have Forge Bay, uh, two star collecting boxes. Uh, they're actually your choice. So if you pick one, you can go to Sword and Board and they'll trade you for any other star collecting boxes you want. I just want to have something up here. A, uh, an Army Painter D&D Pigment Monsters Paint Set, which also comes with a really dope owl bear. <laughs> owl bear. <laughs> uh, KR 4853B case. Sure. Ooh, with three, uh, three KR cases in there. That's and then a uh, KR 2B case, which has two KR cases in there as well. Um, so we're going to go from the bottom to the top. So, as we said, we really like to have people enter train into this event because it really helps us have great tables for you. But we want to thank people for doing that. And this year, there was one table in particular that really stood out in terms of quality, and uh, that table was a wonderful city fight table over there, and that is Dana's. Dana's, come on up. Pick your, pick your prize, bro. Pick your prize. Oh, no, no. Oh, no? No. He got Best overall gets first. Best overall gets first. Oh, okay. Fine, okay. yeah. next. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. uh, so next up, we did a cross event prize just because there's so many beautiful miniatures. We wanted the Harrison guys to have an opportunity to uh, to enter a mini. And I remember the first time I went to Astro. It was probably like the first organized event I ever did as a Warhammer player. And there was a guy who had an Emperor's Children army that was done with non-metallic metal, and it was just beyond gorgeous. And it's something that I have always felt like I'll never live up to. But this guy, he helps out with the Harrison community so much. Where's John? He's he gone too. Anyway, you should see this Praetor conversion he did. He took Alexis Pollux's uh, body, he like shaved off the Imperial Fist insignias. Like the weathering <laughs> actually looks like he went in with a knife and took chunks out of the armor, but it's all done like uh, paint. Paul's going to post yeah. all of the entries for the best single mini prize, Woo. so we can all take a look at them. It's but uh, I'm sure you'll agree, like, <laughs> John Jose. John's a madman. He once told me he'd never play uh, paint non metallic metal again, and, he and then he started doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so John Old habits die hard. Mike left too. That sucks. He sure did. Well, he's going to get the last prize up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Which is great. Um, another new prize this year. Uh, you saw the achievements in your player pack. A lot of you went out of your way to score them, to make sure you were keeping track of them. I hope they added a little extra level of fun for you this weekend. Um, and this person went after them hard. I saw him every game making sure he was checking them off and got them. And that's Mr. Alexander Albuquerque. So this is uh, best presentation as voted by the community, as opposed to Paul, because Paul can be a little bit of a... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just get easily bribable. <laughs> um, so you may have seen this display board. It was, it was wonderfully done, very simple, very effective. Uh, there was a big honking tank on it, which I hear sucks. It sucks. It's so bad. <laughs> well, come on up. Hey! Next up is the person who impressed Paul the most, and he was texting me at like 4 o'clock in the morning yesterday, he's like, I don't know who I do this to. Like, literally last night when I went home from the bar, like, I woke my girlfriend up, I was like, I have an impossible thing to do. She's like, it's 2 o'clock. I was like, doesn't matter, Harrison never sleeps. <laughs> so it was a really tough call. Uh, there were four people, four people who scored 40 above on the brain. That's unheard of. And in general, the hobby today was just absolutely fantastic. The amount of 30s and above, it just keeps getting better. And I really like to see people who have been in the club for a long time consistently get those rubrics higher and higher every event they come to. So keep up the good work. Um, this guy's new to coming to a hot town event. Uh, you may have seen his wonderfully painted, very cool looking 
Drew and Metz. Wayne, come on up.